Governor James Gilmore and Governor Mark Warner on the executive protective unit in Richmond, Virginia. In 2004, she joined the federal government as a federal agent with the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. In September 2006, she made the decision to join the Leesburg Speakeasy's Postmasters Club in Leesburg, Virginia. She also is a member of the AOL Postmasters. In July of 2007, she became a president of the Leesburg Speakeasy Club. In the 2007 fall conference, she participated in her first Postmasters competition. She won the District 27 Table Topics competition. She is also a part-time graduate student at the George Washington University Study and Leadership in Organizations. Please help me welcome Mo Hamilton, and she's going to tell us all how to win Table Topics. <laughs> Now, if you think that you're here for the other presentation on how to use table topics in the workplace, that's a different presentation. <laughs> Today, you're going to learn how to be a winner at the district level when you compete in table topics. By a show of hands, how many of you have actually competed at the district level in table topics? One, two, three. Okay, so we have a few in here. And what I hope to do today is a few things. Two. We're going to do first strategy. I'm going to give you the acronym that I found very successful in my last table topic competition that I've shared with others and they can testify that it's been very helpful. And then second, we're going to actually get participation from you so that you can apply the strategy and show it to everyone here. I think they'll really love it. And then I have gifts to give you afterwards, so I hope that entices those to <laughs> participate. So, what is the strategy? First is G. If you look at your sheet in front of you, it's called games. And the reason why I came up with games is it's easy to remember. And when you do a table topic, it should be fun. Never go into a table topic competition scared. Because if you're scared, the audience is scared. So if you're having fun, they're going to have fun. So that's why I chose games. And especially that it applied to what I want to show you today. So the very first thing you want to do is get their attention. How many of you have seen someone go up and go, Madam Princess Master, fellow test masters, and yes. After the eighth person saying that, you're probably like, okay, what's the answer to the question? What? <laughs> you lose your audience and the judges especially. So what I want you to do today is to get their attention. There is someone in the audience that I won't pick out that I actually saw her compete and she got the audience attention. If I may, I'll show you. She actually said, Na 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 na, you can't have it. And guess what? Everyone was involved in her table topic immediately. She did an excellent job. I was so impressed. But that's what you want to do. You want to capture the audience at the onset. You can certainly pause, as we learned yesterday from Darren before, right? You can pause, take your time, but then you come out with something that's going to captivate and hold that audience the very onset, okay? Next, you want to acknowledge the judges and the audience after you got their attention, okay? Because if you ever notice at a competition, everyone is writing down what is their response to the question. So they're, they're looking at you and they probably forgot to write it down because you got them at the very beginning. So now it's time to acknowledge the audience. Next. You want to make a response. You can't forget to answer the question. Now, I will give you strategy today to win, but then you have to give the content. That will seal the deal. So this is where your content comes into play. You will make a response. If you forget that, what are you doing? <laughs> you got their attention, but then where do you go with it? You must answer the question or reply to the statement. Now, I've had these speeches before, and I've had people go, well, Mom, what are you doing when it's called bang? Have you ever had that, just that one word? They said, what are you doing when it's bang? I said, everybody get down. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Use your imagination and work with what you have. Do not let the audience know that you're not happy with your question or statement because that will definitely throw them off. I had one that said, what is patriotism? And I thought, after my speech, you'll find out real quick what patriotism is. <laughs> But you have to work with what you have and you have to embrace the challenge, make it fun. So now you're making a response. Next, you need to use examples to support your purpose. If you talk about how you love apple pie, tell us why you love apple pie. Relate to the audience, use your experiences. When I walk into the room, mm, it smells so good. My stomach starts moving. I just taste it in my mouth. Take the audience with you on that journey. Use a few examples to support your purpose. And then finally, you want to summarize. You want to bring it all together. Does everyone have it? It's called games. It's a lot of fun. It's really easy to do. But it's something you need to practice. It's not going to happen overnight. We're going to have a lot of fun seeing a few people in here try it today. But it is a lot of fun. If you follow this, you will be a winner, but you have to use content. This cannot stand on its own merit. Next, what are some places that you think you can get ideas from? I've heard people say with table topics, you can't practice. You, you, you know, just get up there. Just smile and say something. If you want to win, you need to practice, and you can practice. When I was a contestant, Every chance I had, I practiced. I had my cards. I have cards today that you've probably never seen before. It's called Go Ask Anyone. Great table topics here. And of course, Toastmaster sell table topic cards. Give it to your friends and say, give me something, give me something. Everywhere I went, I was like, give me a table topic. If I was on the phone, uh, hi, how you doing? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, the weather's good, great. Give me a table topic, please. <laughs> yes, give me a table topic. So what are some places that you think that you can get ideas to answer questions from table topics, anyone? The newspaper, the media, yes. There's a lot of things going on, and believe it or not, that is where your table topics master may get their questions. We had a lion on the loose at one of our colleges in Maryland. That was a table topic. <laughs> but if it's in your mind, it will come out. So it's not going to be too foreign for you when you're standing up there in front of a standing room only and you get that question about a lion. You're like, I read that yesterday. I'm ready. <laughs> what are some other places? Your kids. Your kids, family, life experiences, right? Our family is probably the best table topic ever made. So I know I said to <laughs> I mean, your family is a great way because guess what? People can relate to your experiences, right? If you did something, they probably did it too. And it's just great to share that because then the audience starts nodding their head and they're with you on your table topic. What are some other places? Your yes. job. Your job, yes, a work experience. Especially if you don't do it, you ask me question. See? <laughs> See? And then it becomes a humorous response. <laughs> what are some other things? Yes. Travel. Travel. I've traveled, you've traveled, we're in Canada. Guess what, this might be a table topic when I get back to Virginia. So yes, when you travel, so I have all of those up here. We have the media, your Toastmasters Club, travel, and the cards that we talked about. Now, moving along, there are some few common mistakes that I, I see. And it's not really a mistake, but it's something that's probably not going to be that person in the top of the And you probably know about some of these already as they pop up on the screen. Repeat the question. I had someone ask me about that this morning. Why repeat the question? You get it twice. The audience heard it about eight times already. All you're doing when you do that is five more time. And it's obvious. I will give you some techniques on how to listen to the question the first time, get your mindset ready, and when the second question is read the second time, you're going to definitely be ready. So don't repeat it again. They've heard it already. Next, if you acknowledge the audience first, it doesn't hurt you, but it doesn't make 
you stand out. The whole purpose of the acronym today is to have you stand out from nine other contestants or eight other contestants. That's what the judges are looking for. And we also have on the back of your sheet what the judges are looking for. We're gonna go over that briefly. But you want to stand out from the crowd. You, if you're not, if you're first, I know I see, we were talking about this yesterday. If you're first, it doesn't matter. Because if you leave that impression, then they're gonna compare everyone with you. If you're third, it doesn't matter. Leaving that lasting impression and being an effective speaker is what Table Topics is really all about. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a really good question. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> of course it's a great question. It's the district level. So saying that is a great question is really not going to help your odds unless you really bring it and hit a home run hit after that. But definitely you don't want to let him know or her know that it's a great question. Failure to use the room. Sometimes we get nervous and we just stand right here and we give our table topic. Use the room. Reach people. Get them involved in what you're actually saying. Now, I will admit, I had too many cups of coffee during my competition. <laughs> and I had someone in the waiting room doing calisthenics and stretches. I was intimidated. It was my first competition. And you will see me, I have a copy, work that floor. I was walking like I was on a treadmill. Come on with me, people. <laughs> I want to win this competition. <laughs> and then next, the deer in the headlights. And unfortunately, we have seen this. And this is based on experience and preparation. It can happen to any one of us. You get that bang sound, and you think someone dropped something. So you're still standing there wondering when your question is coming. <laughs> it happens. And unfortunately, the best thing that you can do is keep talking. Don't just stand there. If you freeze and your mind goes bloody, say something. You just don't stand there. Keep talking. It has happened. We've had that happen recently in our district. So keep talking. Now, this is what I call the world famous table topic. Let me go back to my mic. It's a little fast here. And I want to know if you've seen this before. Second one. 
what is it? Effectiveness. Effectiveness. That's what we talked about earlier. You really don't want to speak ever unless you're effective. And that's why we all join Toastmasters, so that we become effective speakers. If I stand before you today and just said the sky is blue and the weather is great, I've been ineffective and wasting your time. Never want to do that. Always when you speak, remember that you want to leave a message and a lasting impression. That's the purpose. So look at that. Remember that if you're competing, you need to know what the judges are looking for. Now, when I had my table talk again, Lily, I believe you were responsible uh, for it. <laughs> No, I didn't come up with the question. You didn't come up with the question? <laughs> I was very nervous. You're going to get to see it, so please don't laugh. No. And this was my question. You awoke You awoke this morning and found out you have a superhero power. Now tell us about it. Now, most table topics will be something that you can be as creative as you like. It doesn't always have to be truthful, but keep it within the realm of reality to some extent, okay? You don't want to say you put on a cake and flew over a building. You might lose your judges. <laughs> but definitely use creativity to your advantage. And what happens is when you hear the question the first time, whatever comes to your mind first, do it. Okay? So when you hear the question the first time, what first comes into your mind, stay with it. The second time the question is read, now you're thinking of two examples to support that. And then when they say your name, you pause and you take off. You're ready. So the first time the question is read, think of what first comes to mind. Because listening, and Toastmasters, they teach us this in the Listening Effectively Manual, that listening is a four-component system. I would have never known that. Four components. The first is to receive the information. So if I'm standing here, I'm receiving the information. Then I'm organizing the information. So like a file cabinet in my head, I'm placing that information in different portions of the cabinet by importance. Okay, now I'm interpreting what they're saying. I'm actually analyzing it and trying to figure it out. Now I'm ready to respond. That's the four part component. And if you think that you're lacking in total table topics, it's probably an area of listening that's the problem. So think about that. Okay, here we go. You ready? All right, let's take a look at most table topics. Oh, you just said no. And I get 
get back so I can look at the rest of the line? <laughs> Thank you. 
were no object? What would it look like? Where would your ultimate vacation home be if money were no object? And what would it look like? My husband and I are about to have a problem. I am only five years, six years from retirement, hard to believe. I know I look young, but I'm not. <laughs> and he is a very laid back and calm person. And I, in case you haven't noticed and see me around, go very fast all the time and don't stop. Madam Table Topics Chair and fellow Toastmasters, there is a conflict coming because his idea of retirement is probably to do what he does now, sit in the computer all night long and play games. <laughs> Go to the garden occasionally, plant some vegetables, pick them and eat them. My idea of retirement, I'm waiting for that chance to get away from the job, which actually I'm having a lot of fun at, but you know, it's a job. I'm waiting for the chance to get out and do volunteer work. I have an orphanage waiting for me in Mozambique. If I, my home is a little hot with straw, I'm really going to be quite happy in one room because how much cleaning does one room need? <laughs> I spent some time in one room before. It's simple. It's, there's none of this laundry. There's none of this washing windows. You don't have windows. You have to wash them. So my, my ideal hut is just one room in Mozambique with about 200 kids that I can just look after all the time. Now, the only downside of this whole process is something very tiny that flies around called a mosquito. Because I am very sweet. <laughs> and they love me. And I, even though, hanging the laundry out the other night, I was covered in mosquito bites, even though I had my wool socks, my long, long pants on, and, and I was covered. Like, there was very little of me open, but I am covered in mosquito bites, and I know they have malaria. But that's OK. Doesn't see, uh, vacation home is not absolutely perfect. So my, my um, ideal vacation, or my ideal vacation is a long-term vacation in Mozambique in one room. Cheap, and the money that I have, if money is no object, is for the kids. <laughs> if you had to be a character on a TV show, who would you be? If you had to be a character on a TV show, who would you be?
Madam Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests, my luxury item is a tiger. <laughs> Can you just imagine? Imagine I have all sorts of money. I could feed the beast. I could feed people I don't like to the beast. <laughs> Right. Because you read it, you 
Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yes. Um, I, just a quick observation. The, your point about taking what person puts their mind, I find, if nothing else, is excellent uh, because I have a habit of I'm waiting for that gem of an idea, and so I'm stuck on the, the subjects or the directions that are swirling around my head. But if you just pick that first one and then you take that extra time to develop it a little bit, it's so much more effective. So that is a very helpful. Well, I'm glad. And, and believe me, that will help because some of us do that. We're like, no, I don't like that. No, oh, I don't like that. And the next thing you know, they're saying your name. Yeah. You're like sitting here like, uh, no, we don't. Like right, yeah. right. And we don't want you to do that. We want you to be winners here. Yes. Were these timed? They but were not. I, I, so I had a timer working. here, but we wanted them to have fun. So we have plenty of time to, to give them an opportunity. Any other questions? Well, I've certainly enjoyed being here with you. I hope that this was very useful. Please share it with your areas, your clubs. I think it's a great tool that people can remember and definitely enhance their table topics. The more they practice, the better they get at it. Make sure that you have great content because with that together with the GAMES acronym, you will be a winner. Send me an email. My email address is on the first page. Check out our television show website. I'm the executive producer of that hit television show and we're sharing it across the world. So give us your comments and for that, I thank you. I have a red flag. Thank you. <laughs>